Welcome back everybody to Journeyman Outfitter. Today we're doing a little bit different of a video. I know a lot of times we talk about cars, boats, and other fun things, but today we're talking about camping. You know, well, in specific, we're going winter camping down in South Carolina and North Carolina where we'll be hiking. Um, I think uh, right now it's snowing and it should accumulate from five to 10 inches, they say, over the next two days. Uh, we're leaving tomorrow morning to hike a total of 20 miles um, kind of up and down in the mountains. It should be a ton of fun, but I wanted to talk about packing crap because I watched a ton of videos on ultralight camping and there was no direct information for what weights too much. So I always equate the military and hiking to one in the same. When I was a kid, my father would always buy surplus gear and in turn we would carry surplus gear which is always military is going to carry more weight so i got used to carrying upwards of 60 pounds in a pack and that wasn't that odd um, essentially you're shooting for back in the day a quarter of your weight no more than that so at 200 pounds you know 50 to 60 pounds not a big deal now that's fully loaded you'll often hear terms like pack weight um, or base weight this uh, indicates what the pack weighs without food and drink. We're talking about reality, what you're actually carrying. So I'm gonna show you what I got in my pack, kind of a little bit of why I carry it. We're gonna kind of shotgun through this and then I'll tell you how much the pack weighs at the end. So if you wanna see what that is, just skip to the end. Now you can see what the pack weighs. Uh, the pack I'm rocking is gonna be an old school camp trail. Now this is a military external style um, surplus pack and indeed it was purchased 20 some odd years ago. It's been a great pack, held up great for me for all the hiking that I've done. I go once every couple years. I'm not an avid camper by any means, but having the gear and being able to do it is important. So let's get started with uh, the most important things. Now I always use a good pair of suspenders. Purpose for that is I don't like to necessarily wear a belt when I'm hiking, so suspenders are nice. They keep your pants up, and they also allow you to clip things to it. A great add to any backpack. Now, because we're doing this cold weather camping, um, a few things that I have right off hand. A good pair of insulated, these are elk leather gloves from Cabela's. Uh, great gloves hold up well, keep your hands nice and warm. Once you get hiking, you don't need any of this stuff. This is more just for starting out and stopping at night. Yesterday, I went ahead and made uh, this wool jacket um, out of an old military surplus blanket and some felting I had laying around the house. Um, essentially, it's kind of like a hunter's, oops, sorry. It's kind of like a hunter's jacket. Um, I put pockets, uh, magnetic uh, bands, and the pièce de résistance heating. So there's actually heating elements in the jacket. Before I sewed the rear and fore panel together, I basically stitched in, um, in the arms, two in the back, and four in the front, um, small, like a heated seat in a car. And uh, basically the cord is in here to plug it in, and you put your normal USB battery in there, and that can run the jacket for a few hours. Heated jackets are becoming popular and uh, I'm not getting any younger and I hate cold weather so it's a great alternative. The back of the jacket just so you can see um, has a vent with a magnetic snap uh, that's more just to let sweat out. It will get hot in the jacket so I mean it's heavy German wool um, and then interiors like a kind of a wool uh, polyester blend but made that. Next is my um, uh, standard wool over pullover. Now this is what I'll wear most of the time. This again is um, made by Journeyman Outfitter. Uh, this is nice because it's light but at the same time um, it stops the wind. It's single layered so it's not super thick but the material does a really good job. Two breast pockets. Um, I would wear this normally hiking and then you can kind of peel it back as you heat up. But that's kind of the extent of the winter protection I carry in the uh, pack. Next is for sleeping. 
um, a couple of things and this is again a bit weird uh, this is a, again a heated vest um, at you know 20 and below temperature it's tough it's tough when you you've laid there for a few hours uh, most bags will keep you hot at the bottom hot at the top uh, and what's nice is you can plug one of these in you can adjust the temperature slide it around in the pack in the sleeping bag and that's basically is like a tiny heater each battery that i carry will last about four to five hours um, you know it would take three batteries to last 12 hours most of the time um, but i'm bringing six batteries so should last me two nights which that's what i'm shooting for next base layers always nice this is just a nice synthetic um, kind of blend wicking material help pull some of that moisture off of you and i'll carry wool socks so as far as easy to swap i've got um, t-shirt as well um, just a set of nice thick these are Carhartt wool socks um, I'm a big fan of wool socks so I always got those next is gonna be a sleeping bag uh, this is a Kelty 20 degree bag um, it uh, it's lightweight so it's a synthetic material um, over the years it's probably more like a 30 degree bag now but it does just fine for me uh, for as much as i go camping that day okay next water bottle yeah everybody knows what that stuff is next i always carry extra nylon in case a strap breaks on your pack these are those batteries i was talking about we've got tons and tons of those so um, i just essentially that's an important thing to me so you know out of all the things you carry you carry the things that are important for you specifically all right next we're going to go in we've got a pack cover um, in case it starts snowing or raining this is a nice quick uh, pull out cover you can put over the bag help keep water out even though the bag is waterproof that's nice it ensures everything stays dry now we've got first aid um, this is just basically uh, burn ointment uh, all sorts of different stuff it's got coagulant it's got tweezers <clears throat> it's got abdominal pads in case you have a serious wound for stopping bleeding all that uh, coagulants really nice that helps out all right everybody's favorite the TP don't forget that it's important uh, this is a secret I'm not gonna tell you what that is all right um, shiny blankets the mylar emergency blankets important um, that may give away what that is i'm not going to say what that was but uh, mess cup a little bit heavy compared to what most people carry but again military surplus so that's what i've always got in my head all right um, next is going to be food now people are going to carry food in a lot of different ways um, anti-bear anti-animal having these sealed packets of food really nice so i brought mountain house and mre these are us mres from sapico um, i like the mountain house it's freeze dried which is really cool but um, they are not airtight like these um, <clears throat> in the classic sense so the scent of this is long gone off the material and a bear other animals not going to smell that anywhere near as easy as they will with the freeze dried stuff that's going to be in most of your big box retails now for two days i brought three mres um, and then uh, two freeze dried that's overkill on the food but who knows what if you're out there more than two days next a couple different things micro stove and propane bottle uh, this is a 30 pound i think yeah um so not that big or sorry 30 percent propane 70 percent butane so it's just your camp stove stuff always nice now the one thing uh really important thing this here this is kind of a, a secret i started doing a long time ago i probably won't touch this uh at all during the trip but it is a vacuum sealed uh packet with socks underwear base layer um it's got a gator pants um, socks 
everything in it in case I go underwater. Um, now the chances of that, especially where we're going, is minuscule to none, but a lot of different things can happen and being prepared is one of the most important things in my book. So I am sacrificing three pounds, two pounds with this, but I would not like to sacrifice my life if carrying a little extra weight is all I have to do to ensure that, that uh, yeah, prolonged life. Next, um, I went shopping for a K-Bar and they were stupid expensive. So um, I went out to the shop, hammered out my own forge blade out of um, uh, A1 steel, A1, 1A, A1 steel. Um, hardened it, uh, profiled it uh, after the old Marine K-Bar, um, sharpened it nice and sharp. Uh, and that's kind of main source of uh, cutting for limbing, stuff like that. We'll see if it holds up. I did test it a little, but hey, you never know. All right. And then the last couple things, which I'm not going to disassemble, but I'll show you. Uh, marine wool blanket, uh, blow up mattress, and then hiding in the back here is the tent. It's a one person tent. Um, all said and done, the pack weighs 38 pounds. Uh, that's fully loaded with water, all of the extra winter gear. That includes my boots, the whole shebang. Um, me and the pack together were in the one, uh, what was that, 143, I think it was. Uh, so I'm right at 205 pounds. So all said and done, we're well under the one quarter weight, which is what I always shoot for. But that's what I pack along with me just as a mainly some of it's precautionary some of it's a little more uh comfort oriented like the batteries again that's a crazy thing i don't care about the cell phone or the camera that stuff can die um but uh comfort's a real big thing and in prolonged exposure circumstances especially when you're in that below 30 degree uh weather which your body is really going to fight to keep that temperature up so it's nice if you can help it along but I hope this video helped. I hope you learned a little bit about, well, what I pack, what you might want to pack. Uh, just keep in mind that <clears throat> some people may say uh, you're overloaded. It's all about what you can handle. So if you're uncomfortable uh, carrying this much weight, don't do it. If you uh, want to work your way up to it, there's tons of videos out there about how to strengthen your ability to pack weight. Um, and just remember, there is diminishing return when it comes to all this stuff. Uh, for instance, the pack, you may be able to save uh, eight ounces out of a pack by getting an ultra light internal frame, blah de blah. Is it worth it to spend $700 on a pack for some people? Absolutely. For people like me, no. I'm really cheap. <laughs> I try to make everything if I can by hand uh, because that's one less penny I have to spend. Uh, it's, can be put towards all the fun car projects. So stay tuned. We got our projects coming out uh, like crazy. Appreciate you for tuning in to Journeyman Outfitter. We'll see you real soon.